Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a classic boogie-woogie style rhythm. You might call it rockabilly, but it's somewhere between rockabilly and boogie-woogie. Um, and I have three different versions of it. And the reason I did that was to give you some variety. I wanted you to be able to t mix and match these different versions of this and use it in your own playing. Uh, but the second reason is I wanted to create three different levels of difficulty. So level one is the easiest, at least the way that I see it. Uh, level two is a little more advanced, and then we go to level three, which is the most advanced of those three. That'll give just about anyone out there in the spectrum of learning a chance to play this. And you can play this on an acoustic guitar as well. You don't have to have an electric. There's no string bending or any of that. Now this lesson is great in terms of timing. So those of you that struggle with timing, uh, you have to be right on the beat when you're playing this style. And it's also really good for alternate picking. There's a lot of down up strokes, focusing on one string at a time. And so this will be good for that. And as a big takeaway, I want you to walk away with some different rockabilly style rhythms so that if you're in a jam scenario and you really want to spice things up, you'll be able to tap into some of these and, and use them in a jam. So this lesson is split into three parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at part one. If you'd like to watch part two and part three, as well as download the tablature and the MP3 jam track, which I have in a few different tempos, by the way, uh, you can get that at ActiveMelody.com. Just look for EP186. That's the lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so one thing you'll notice about a boogie-woogie style rhythm like this is that it's often played and even demonstrated down in the key of E, down in first position on the neck. And the reason for that is because you have these open strings. You have the open E string and the open A string. And so those are two strings that you don't have to fret. And that allows you to play a lot of these, these licks that we're about to learn. Uh, now, if you wanted to play everything in a different key, you can easily do that just by throwing on a capo and playing these same licks in a different position on the neck. So keep that in mind. Now, I want to show you uh, the way that I think about Boogie Woogie uh, first, and then we'll go into the specifics of, the, of, of version one. So the way that I think of it is this little pattern here, and it's easy to play, um, and this will make a lot of sense to you once we go through it, but it's the open sixth string, the fourth fret on the sixth string, and Sorry, then there's the uh, second fret on the fifth string. And then we have the fourth fret uh, on the fifth string. And then the second fret on the fourth string. So those notes, if we play them up and then go back down, you can start to hear that boogie woogie thing come out. And it's really easy to visualize because it's just. Uh, you're played between the second fret and the fourth fret here and you can see you're just skipping a fret and you're creating like a little visual box that's how I kind of see it on the neck now one other version of that is to play to add a seventh note so you get more of a bluesy sound right there you go up to the fifth fret on the fifth string same notes otherwise and then back down and that's all played over the E chord or the one chord so just remember that that open string, that first string is an E note, so it's played over the E chord. Now, if we wanted to do that over the A chord or the IV chord, very easy to do because we just take the exact same pattern and we play them all up a set of strings. So we start on the fifth string now. Everything translates, even the blues note. Back to the one chord. Now when we go to the fi uh, five chord, it's th the little box here is exactly the same. Uh, we're playing between two frets. This time, though, we're playing between the fourth fret and the sixth fret. And we start that on the fifth uh, string, second fret. So think of how that plays off of the B chord. Is your B note. So we start there, and then I always just slide up to the sixth fret. And then we play that same little pattern. Then back down to the fourth chord. Back to the one chord. Now that's where it all comes from. That's boogie woogie like 101 right there. Um, so that's hopefully if you don't if you didn't know that, hopefully you've learned something and you can start um, start playing around with that. And definitely try playing it over the jam track that's provided. Uh, that'd be a good starting point. Um, now let's look at this uh, specific lick we're about to learn. This is the easiest of the three, I think. Uh, it's fairly simple because there's not a lot of fast picking uh, that happens. That's the problem with a lot of rockabilly that when you try and learn it, or not rock, well, rockabilly too, but boogie woogie, it's often, you know, you're playing a lot of uh, alternate picking with the right hand and it can really kind of trip you up. 
All right, so the way that we play this first version goes like this. We have a downstroke on the sixth string, and then we have an upstroke on the fourth string. Now that's behind the second fret here, so I'm fretting on the second fret. So those are two E notes, E and an E, and they're an octave apart. Now you can see, if I were playing an E chord here, these two notes would be in that E chord. I'm just kind of pointing that out to, so you can kind of put this into context. Okay, so down, up. Now we're going to have a series of down strokes. We're going to go to the fourth fret on the fifth string. It's a down. There's the second fret on the fifth string. And then we're back to the fourth fret. And then we're back to the second fret with an up stroke. So if we put that together, we have down, up, down, 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 up. And it just repeats. And that's the pattern. Now you can see where timing is critical in this. It starts on the one, so if you're counting it in, it's one, two, three, four, one. Um, but you're going to want to play along with that jam track. If, you, if you're not a premium member and you don't have the jam track, uh, try setting a metronome to whatever uh, speed you're comfortable with and just try playing that, just to get that groove down. It should sound like that. Now, the way that I played that was I went through it four times, and on the fourth time, I just ended right there on the uh, fourth fret, fifth string. Now, one other thing to point out is you'll notice we're already playing in that little pattern that I showed you. So that hopefully that makes these notes start to make sense. These are coming from that kind of um, boogie woogie 101 area, that root that I was telling you about. So that last time it just ends there so that you can go to the four chord. And for that, it's exactly the same. We're just doing everything up a set of strings. So it's now on the fifth string. Same, I'm not even gonna go through the, uh, the uh, picking pattern here because it's the same. But it's played over the A. And we play through that twice. back down to the one chord. And you can see the way that you get out of the A chord is with an upstroke there. And then we come back and hit the downstroke to reset the one chord. All right, so let me go ahead and just play through the one chord and the four chord. We'll play through everything up to this point just so you can get a feel for it. Here we go. Now to get to the five chord, I could have went, which would have been probably the most logical thing in terms of predictability, but I wanted to give you a variation on this. And I think actually this variation makes it even a little easier. So what I ended up playing was, and what, what that is, this is how I visualize it anyway. I think of the five chord, I think of that B chord, which looks like this. And I play the low note, the low B note, and then I play the high note out of that. And so that's just the second fret, fifth string, and then the fourth fret, third string. And then I came down and went. And for that, that's the second fret on the third string, first fret on the third string. And then my pinky goes down there on the fourth fret, uh, fourth string. So. And actually, the way that I ended that was between the, I went from the fourth fret to the second fret on the fourth string, so that I can go to the to the open fifth string. So let's talk about where these notes are coming from. Those are coming out of the mixolydian scale, mixolydian mode for the key of B. So I'm just switching the scale to match that chord. So the B chord, there's your major chord for B. The only difference between that major scale and the mixolydian is one note. You just take the seventh interval and you flat it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See how that's flatted instead of like that? So when I played that, 
that that's coming out of that Mixolydian scale. That's probably getting a little too advanced. I just wanted to throw that in for those of you that are curious about it. I didn't think about that when I was playing it. I had to analyze it just to be able to articulate it to you, but that's at least where it's coming from. When I was playing it, I just sort of knew the B chord and I knew I have these notes that I can play around that chord shape. And that's how I think about playing. I do not think in terms of theory uh, when I'm actually doing it, when I'm improvising. I don't think you have enough time to sit and work out the math. Uh, so that's where it starts to re you start to rely on your gut. But it is important to understand at least why, why it works. Okay, so. Then we come to the, um, that was the five chord. We then go to the A chord, or the four chord, and I play. And that is open fifth string. I take my pinky and come up here to the fifth fret, fourth string, and did a slide down. I picked it and slid down to the fourth fret, second fret on the fourth string. And then there's fourth fret, second fret on the fifth string. And then we're right back down to the one chord. Now that comes from this little note here. Uh, the way that I think of that note is when I, you're playing like a shuffle. There's where that note comes from, creates sort of a seventh chord there. So that's where that comes from. And then you're back to the one. So those are some twists to the, the root that we learned, that first root. Those are some branches, if you will. But it gives you some variety so that when you're playing this boogie woogie stuff, you know, if you're improvising and playing behind somebody or whatever. You have some uh, some different things you can throw out, and it really makes you sound like a much more uh, professional player, I think. And they're a lot more fun to play that way. All right, let me back up, and I'll play through all of version one. And then we're going to go on to, in the next video, we'll go into version two, and then which is a little more advanced, and then we'll go into version three. Thank you.